Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnus. Me to Connor Jessup about season three of Lock and Key, streaming worldwide now on Netflix. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I mean, it's pretty crazy to see specifically with you know the lock brothers and sisters and tyler of the arc and the changes i mean i love the fact that this is a genre bending show but just seeing all the kind of roller coaster emotions that tyler and kinsey and Bodie, what's that like seeing that app like specifically with the siblings that kind of emotions of roller coasters after every season <laughs> Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the most fun things about working in TV is just the length of it. I mean, yeah. you get to you get to go through a lot. I mean, in movies, characters tend to have a single story. You know, they have a beginning and middle and an end. Mm -hmm. And in a TV show, over three years, you 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 hit a lot of beats, and <laughs> you get really close with the people that you're working with. You know, yep. and in season two and three, especially, we shot them back to back, so we were shooting together in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. For a full year, uh, basically, we were the only people each other were seeing. Yep. Um, so by the end of it, we felt like incredibly close. And to go to work every day and kind of develop this relationship that is so close to a family mm -hmm. um, and then be a family on camera, yep. it just started to feel really natural. So when we were... I mean, the difference, I guess, is that what we're going through shooting is a lot more fun than what the when the locks are going through. <laughs> but, but it did feel it. Other than that, we weren't we weren't in any mortal danger. But otherwise, I mean, we had ups and downs and lefts and rights, and we were. I had periods where Kinsey and Tyler were screaming at each other. Periods where they were fighting together. Periods where they were hugging, laughing, crying. It's like every, we feel. I feel like I've been through everything with them. Um, yeah. And I think, in a way, that's what the locks feel like by the end of season three. Oh, absolutely. Not really a big spoiler. I mean, you know, season three is out now. People could see it worldwide on Netflix. I mean, there's obviously like a time traveling component for season three. And I feel like when we saw the trailer, we knew that was going to happen. That was really exciting because the show from season one and two blended so many elements and so many genres, in my yeah. opinion. Then time traveling comes in the mix. So what's going through your mind when you find out that time traveling is part of season three of Lock and Key? <laughs> I mean, why not? I was mostly just, <laughs> I was mostly just bummed that I couldn't, when, when they started to work in the uh, 1776 stuff, I was hoping that I would get to go back to 1776. I thought that would be fun, but no cigar. Um, so, I mean, I wish that we had more seasons so that we could, that we could become a, a proper time travel show. And mm -hmm. I, I want to, I want Tyler Locke. I want, I want the Locke siblings in uh, ancient Rome. Why not? Yeah, I know absolutely. It's so it's so interesting. It's 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 one of those things too where you know, you look at this show that, you know, it's based on like there's graphic novels lock and key. You look yeah. at the show. I always thought that was interesting, Connor, because there's a situation where there are characters that were in the graphic novels that are in lock and key, but there's also characters that are not in the graphic novels that yeah. are new. And then there's also like like graphic like they're mentioned in the graphic novels but like we don't know like yeah. but then we see them more do you find that's pretty cool and unique for a storyteller like yourself being part of an adapted kind of screenplay of like something based on it where it there is familiarity but it's also a whole new world because there are characters that aren't in the graphic yeah. novels yeah i mean the, uh, the, the just by its the shape of its form i mean yeah. the tv show is just longer than you know mm -hmm. graphic novel is a pretty concise a uh, comics are a pretty concise storytelling mm -hmm. yep. form Whereas TV, there's just more space, there's more room, especially over three seasons of something. So partly you're kind of forced to expand. Mm -hmm. um, but also, before we even started season one, Joe Hill, uh, who created the comics with Gabriel Rodriguez, um, was really open and really generous and specific mm -hmm. about this show not just being... Like, the function of the show is not just to be a... a carbon copy of the graphic you know the graphic novel exists it was so beautiful yep. but this show is something different it's like a it's almost like an alternate reality it's almost like a multiverse version of the same story you yeah know? it's like getting to it's almost boring for him but i think also for people watching and for us 
to to just retread exactly the same steps of a story that's already been told. Yeah. So to tr- to to take the same characters in this beautiful world and this the, this idea, these like core ideas, and then walk a different path in the same direction is kind of exciting, you know. So yeah, there's parts where we kind of the lines cross and it becomes very much like the graphic novel, and then they uncross again and it's mm-hmm. telling new stories with new new keys, new villains, and then it comes back together. And that I think is kind of thrilling. Because we both know this, these graphic novel worlds are so massive and so complex and have so yeah. many characters, right? Even people that are just mentioned. So it's just fun that the possibilities are endless when it gets kind of adapted to the TV screen. It's like exciting to think about. Yeah. And I mean, it's also fun to to know that no matter where your show goes and whatever new directions it takes, that there's still that mm-hmm. like emotional um, through line that's that comes from the graphic novel that it's providing a sense of like direction and stability so that we never get too far off. Absolutely. You act in lock and key, but Connor Jessup is a storyteller also writes, directs. Did you know you were always going to do many things that wear many hats? Like, did you always know you wanted to go behind the camera and on camera as well, Connor? Uh, well, probably since I was like 14. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I mean, I knew that starting to love acting and starting to act properly really coincided with falling in love with movies yeah um and nowhere in, i'm there's nowhere in the world that i feel more at home and safer than on a set i mean it's just the place that i like to be yep. um so it was really obvious to me when i was a teenager that 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 was how i wanted to spend my life <laughs> and that a lot of, and that there were so many fascinating and uh and rich things you could do in that world that besides acting mm. um so yeah, as I've gotten older, definitely one of the one of the uh, m- most exciting, most meaningful parts of my life is uh, is trying to explore the other side of things. I mean, there's just something magical about just making something and seeing the playback, right? I mean, there's nothing like it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also, I mean, the cra- the crazy thing that I it still blows my mind after all these years is how complicated and everything is. I mean, mm-hmm. the every every scene of Lock and Key that you see is the result of thousands and thousands of hours of individual people ta- wonderfully talented people working separately working together over months years bringing together all these elements that mm-hmm. you almost don't notice i mean it's like but in order for that shot and that scene and that sequence to feel the way it does it, they have to be there even if you don't notice them yeah and to me that is the real magic of it is like it feels when you're watching it like a singular thing but it's really ten thousand little fragments glued together mm-hmm. and it's really exciting um and the 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 challenge and the thrill of trying to be the person who pieces all that together and trying to have a coke you know it's like because you're like talking you're like you're sitting in a room and someone says do you want the beige curtain or the cream curtain (laughs) and you're like wow i don't like what's the like and and you but you make all those you make thousands of choices like that and somehow it builds up to something that feels singular and cohesive hopefully and that, to me, that is, I still, it's still mysterious, and I think it probably always will be. Um, but it's really fun. Oh, that, that that's great! I'm, I'm gonna look at all the sets now and just look at the curtains and look at the colors. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like that's the that's how it, you know it's like tr- thousands of choices. Being there was made by a everyone. reason why the curtains are a certain. Color. <laughs> well, everything's a choice, you know. Everything's a choice. Getting back to Lock and Key, you you would agree with me when I say that Lock and Key could be considered a genre bending show, Connor. You agree with that a little bit, right? Yeah, of course. I feel like. Do you know after three seasons of working on this? Do you know which genre or like element of it you like the most, or like is that kind of hard to pick? It's a bit hard. I mean, I don't mean this dismissively to any genre, obviously, but I I've never found thinking in terms of genre really helpful. I mean, I, it doesn't, I, I don't find it actually means much to me. Well, you limit yourself, truth, right? Well, yeah. And it's also like when you're shooting it, you don't think, okay, so this is a horror scene yeah. or, okay, so this is a sci-fi scene or this is a fantasy scene or this is a drama. Like it, it doesn't, the, the show could be full on uh, gory horror. It could be uh satirical car. It could, and, but really your job doesn't change that much. Like you, 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 you ask the same questions, you work with people in the same way. And so to me, I mean, Lock and Key dips its toes into horror and it dips its toes into fantasy and it dips its toes into comedy and it dips its toes into family drama and all these different things. But it always felt like it was doing all those things at the same time. Hmm. Um, and 
I was much more interested in like, um, it's funny, it's like when you're doing a scene, if you're talking about like the demon, the time traveling demon that's coming to kill you, or you're talking about how you can't afford rent next month and how are you going to make the money? It doesn't, as an actor, you're kind of doing the same thing. Yeah. So, so it's, uh, it, genre is like, um, it's just labels. Oh, absolutely. Before we wrap up quickly, season three, the final season of Lock Key is available now on Netflix. When they get to watch season three, Connor, what do you hope the audience takes away from it specifically? I mean, I hope they have fun. I hope, I hope, I mean, the reason why we were even able to make seasons two and three was because people watched and liked season one. And because and the reason we were even able to make season one is because people really liked the comic. And, and there's so much out there that people can watch. There's hundreds of thousands of hours of content and, and you can go on TikTok instead of watching our show, you know? So I hope that, <laughs> I, I hope that the time that you decide to invest in watching the show, whether it's with, by yourself or with your family, whether you've been watching it from the beginning or whether you watch all three seasons now that they're out. Um, I just, I hope you feel like you have even as a little bit as much fun watching it as I had and we all had making it. Oh, absolutely. So well said. Connor, thank you so much for taking some time to chat with me on Pop Turn of a Book Lock and Q. It was really great chatting with you. Thank you so much, Peter. Yeah, it was fun. Season Appreciate three it. available now on uh, Netflix. They can watch that. You, there's an Instagram account. People could keep up date with your stuff as well. Yes, yes. I'm on. I'm on. Just my name, Connor Jessup on Instagram. Yeah, I, I'm riveting content, I'm sure. Yeah, it'll change your life. <laughs> We're just gonna comment of why you chose certain colors on your backdrop or the drapes, the curtains. It's all, yeah, it's just a cream or beige situation on my Instagram. <laughs> well, this has been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Till next time, this is Connor Jessup, who plays Tyler Locke in Lock and Key and PD Beats, signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Poptternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.